inside here is actually, there's actually um, the computing system and then under the screen are cameras. You can't see the cameras, but this is a type of two-way glass. The cameras are what the car is able to, to use to see when it looks out into the world. So we use computer vision using cameras and sensors only. Hello, my name is William. I'm the founder of the Academy of Robotics. We are an autonomous vehicle maker and our product is called Cargo. So we're in a company called Pilgrim Motorsport. They are our project partners, and we've been working with them for over a year, well, nearly three years now. So here in this building, cars are made from raw metal to a fully functional vehicle. Cargo is a self-driving delivery vehicle. Maybe think of it this way. If you bought something online, we make it so that an autonomous vehicle is able to drive itself to your house and deliver the package. So over here is our impossible bit of engineering. So how the wheels turn is this stays straight, but the wheels turn inside. So if you keep an eye on that bit over there, you'll actually see the wheels turn and they'll do a complete revolution. So how the cars drive themselves is we use something called artificial intelligence. It's a type of computer science where we use a camera and behind the camera is a computer which actually thinks for itself and then makes decisions as to what it should do. We use something called convolutional neural networks and evolutionary neural networks. It's just a type of computer science. Um, computers have come a very long way and now we make them think for themselves. This is an electric car completely electric, um, so green, no emissions. So little known fact is that delivery cars, up to 60% of them in London are only 25% capacity. So all these polluting vans are on the road, but they have to because they're trying to meet the demand of same day delivery there and then. This is actually a 200 billion pound problem, last mile delivery. People don't know this, it's only those in the industry that know the scale of the problem. If you don't quite understand, maybe think of how big Amazon is and how they do their deliveries. That's the scale of the problem we're trying to solve. So how the cars drive themselves is we use something called artificial intelligence. It's a type of computer science where we use a camera and behind the camera is a computer which actually thinks for itself and then makes decisions as to what it should do. We use something called convolutional neural networks and evolutionary neural networks. It's just a type of computer science. Um, computers have come a very long way and now we make them think for themselves. So if you come around this way, what you see in front of me here is a build on a car called an AC Cobra. This is a type of car which was available in the 60s. So this metal was all engineered here. There's a welding room in the other room where they, they literally built the chassis and the chaps then begin to assemble the car. In this version, you can see some of the brake lines, all this, all being done here. The next stage is we got onto something like this. This is the sort of final version where the body's put on. So I've been an entrepreneur for several years, maybe about 13 years now. And I started when I was 19, where I started a small company which was in domain registration. It did okay and someone wanted to buy it and that was acquired. Not long after, I did another startup which I took to BBC's Dragon's Den. They hated it. However, it ended up licensing to 11 countries until someone bought that one as well. And then more recently, I had another startup called My City Venue, which was acquired by the UK holiday company Secret Escapes in 2015. After that, I went to university to study artificial intelligence and robotics, and I put together a team of very clever people who helped to innovate to make cargo, the car you see behind me, drive itself. So everything happens under this roof in this building. It's a great place because we start from raw, pretty much raw metal and end up with a fully functional vehicle. If you follow me this way. So as an entrepreneur, for me, it's all about solving problems. I have never gone into it thinking I need to make X amount of money or Y amount of money. It's always about what is the problem we're trying to solve and how can we solve it? And after we've solved that problem, I feel my job is done. And that's often when we find a buyer and the company is acquired or buyers often just come to us and they think that's a really good solution. Can we have it please? And they pay a bunch of money and that's an acquisition. So over here is our impossible bit of engineering. So how the wheels turn is this stays straight, but the wheels turn inside. So if you keep an eye on that bit over there, you'll actually see the wheels turn and they'll do a complete revolution. So there are many ways to make these cars safe. Um, one of the simple ways is that 
every car has got a ring of sensors around it where it is designed to know to not ever hit anything. This is whether the car is controlled by the artificial intelligence or not. The ring of sensors is kind of like a safety force field. Those are a few of the many safety layers that we put to make sure that the cars are safe on the road. Safety is very important, but this is very mature science in that the cars really can see when they drive and they can see better than us. I suppose one of the really important things to say is this is the result of very, very good teamwork. I could not have done this myself. I didn't sit and sketch this all myself. We've got a really excellent team of really smart people. Our lead designer used to work at McLaren as an engineer, as a designer there. And these are some of the sketches he worked on on the screen to finally produce this car. Our lead scientist, he's got over 70 publications in the autonomous vehicle space. Um, most of our team are PhD level. So it's really a great team which came together to make this happen. And I suppose if I was to give advice to anyone who wants to start a business, make sure you surround yourself with very good people, often people smarter than yourself. It's OK. Um, yeah, good people and a good team is what will help you create something like this.